In this video, I talked to one of my favorite authors of all time, Donald Miller, about how to find meaning in your business and in your life. So I've spent the last two years trying to get him on the show so I could introduce you to him, and we finally made it happen. Don's books have spent more than a year on the New York Times bestseller, and my favorite one of all time is A Million Miles in a Thousand Years. He's also the CEO of Story Brand, a marketing company that works with Charity Water, Berkshire Hathaway, Chick-fil-A, and a bunch more on their brand messaging. If you're struggling to find purpose in your work, in your personal life, you're going to really enjoy this video. Let's dive in. I spent 10 years or more as a writer, only writing books. And so imagine, you know, imagine the only thing that you have to turn in for work is one thing every 18 months. <laughs> that is just, it's way too much freedom. <laughs> That's not the word what I thought you would say. It's way too much freedom. I mean, it's like, do I want to work today? Ah, you got 17 months. You don't need to work today. You can go kayaking. <laughs> you know, that was my life. Now I have 24 employees and I don't know what the number is anymore. It's got to be, I mean, I think I probably have to make somewhere around $30,000 a day or I have to lay somebody off, you know, so it, that's a different world. And um, so I'm a completely different human being in terms of my professional career than I was 10 years ago. Um, and I much prefer this version. Uh, I, I would have never predicted that I am wired as an executive, but I really am. I really enjoy it. And, um, but now it's about, you know, I'm up early every morning. I'm getting my work done Then I'm meeting with people so that they can get their work done. We're constantly you know, I, 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 you know how this is, but I view uh, starting and running a company like tr like going on a road trip across the country in a car that keeps breaking down and you only have duct tape and a wrench. You know, that's like all you've got. And, you you know, it's just constantly there's constant pressure uh, and I, I just come alive under it. So it's, it, you know, it's it's a creative life versus versus a not that I'm not creative as a professional, but versus a, a managing life. And uh, both are both were equally fulfilling to me. In fact, I, I would argue that, that running a company is more fulfilling than even writing my memoirs ever was. Not that it wasn't great. It was great. But running a company is more fulfilling. Go on. Well, I can defend that statement by saying running a company <laughs> is really, to me, it's building a community. Uh, it's building a community of people. You, you cannot be a jerk or a guy who doesn't show up or or um, passive aggressive or any of that and be in a healthy and, and create a healthy community. You know, so to me, it's this it's this inciting incident that forces responsibility. And after 10 years of writing memoirs where I could just take the day off and go kayaking rather than get writing done, uh, I needed a good dose of that. Um, what would be, you know, as, when I think of you, well, I guess, what, what do you think of yourself? And then maybe I could tell you what I think of you if you're curious. Yeah, I really, tr I, I try not to think too much about, I mean, that's not true. I try to think too much about myself. I really try to get lost in my work. If as, almost as a, almost as a, uh, I mean, that, that's what logotherapy is. That's what Viktor Frankl says. He says, you know, have a project that you deem is so important that requires you to show up um, that you love getting up every morning and working on it. You know, his three, Victor Frankl's a, 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 a psychologist who was alive during the time of Freud. And Freud argued that man's chief desire was for pleasure. And Victor Frankl came along at the same time and said, Freud's wrong. It's not pleasure. It's meaning. And when people can't find meaning in their life, they distract themselves with pleasure. And I just thought that's genius. And then he said, he said, meaning is an actual feeling. And I think I feel it every day. And um, he said, you get it by doing three things. You have a project that you're working on. Uh, you have a, an optimistic perspective on your suffering. So you so even though you have challenges, you're able to see some sort of bright side to every one of them. Because of this breakup with my fiance, I'm learning this about myself. It doesn't make it less painful. Actually, it does make it less painful. But it, but it also says, okay, you know, there's two sides to this coin. I'm also getting something. So in other words, your challenges don't take you out. They don't take you down because there's also 
some buoyancy to them. And then the third is just a community that you share your experiences with. That's it. I mean, it's, it's so practical and pragmatic. It's ridiculous. It's not like finding the Buddha. There's none of it. There's none of that. It's just these. And then when you really analyze it, and I don't want to, I don't want to say anything negative about Frankel because he is my hero. What he's really doing though, is he's figuring out a way that you can distract yourself emotionally from nihilism. Because if you really sit and study your belly button or yourself for too long, you're going to be a nihilist. <laughs> so to me, it's like, I don't need, I'm not, I'm not super interested in figuring out who I am. I'm interested in finishing these next three books, trying to get this company to pass a hundred million dollars a year, saving up enough money, at least 25 million to run as an independent candidate for Senate and probably lose, almost assuredly lose that election. Also, I don't have to think about how meaningless life is. <laughs> <laughs> when I think of you, I always think of to live an interesting life, you have to do interesting things. Oh, I, I believe that's true. I mean, to, to have an interesting movie, you have to have interesting scenes, you know, that's that completely so, true. So, cool. um, so I was wondering for for the audience and, and one of the things I always like is challenges. I like, uh, you know, what's a challenge? So I got, you know, one thing that came up with the coffee challenge where you go ask for 10% off and you get rejected and then you realize rejection's not so bad. And then you move forward and you're like, oh, what else can I get? You know, what else can I do? What else can I ask for? Um, so I was curious what the Donald Miller challenge would be. To your audience? No, for yourself or for anyone. Like if I you had to have a... For your audience. And I think it's really important. I, I finish this sentence as many times as you can. Not, not forever, but maybe as an exercise for a couple of days. If it weren't for me, X. If it weren't for me, and here, here's why. Uh, woke up a morning, drove my scooter to the office. My wife had been, I realized when I got there, my wife had been calling me the whole time I was on my scooter. You know, I have a helmet on, so I can't hear the phone or anything. Call her back. She's in a panic. I think I just left her 10 minutes ago. Uh, a good friend of ours had taken his life. Sorry. Turn around, get back on the scooter. Don't, don't talk to the staff. He was on my staff. Don't talk to the staff, go back and go to be with his wife. And, uh, and over the, over the next year, a whole community sort of showed up to help. He was a wonderful human being, just had a moment of, I, I think of it more like a tragic accident than anything else. I mean, just a, uh, a moment of mental lapse and that those, those things are so complicated. Uh, you know, and over the next year, w what struck me about his passing and he, him being missing was he, he nor I nor anybody can realize that a human being just can't be replaced. You know, if it weren't for him, somebody wouldn't be taking out the trash on Thursdays. And if it weren't for him, somebody wouldn't be mowing the yard. And if it weren't for him, somebody wouldn't be paying this health insurance. And if it weren't for him, somebody wouldn't be comforting his wife tonight. If it weren't for him, somebody wouldn't have had beers with a friend and been able to encourage them. If it weren't for him, somebody wouldn't have. And that's gone. And you, you literally, you do everything you can. I mean, I would show up and walk the dog. I walked the dog. I walked his dog every day for weeks, you know, just because the dog needed to be walked. And the wife is grieving. So, what, you know, and, I, you know, the point is when you actually ask the question, and it, it, it really helped me understand, wow, if it weren't for me, Betsy would be in a really hard spot in life. If it weren't for me, these, you know, my company, the people would have to go find other jobs if it weren't for me. And it went from from, you know. Any, any moment that you have that's kind of like where you don't feel important for any human being on the planet is ridiculous. We, we are unbelievably important and intertwined. And to realize that, I think, helps you say, okay, I'm going to do another day of this life no matter how depressed you are. Because I don't care how sad you are, you're needed. You're just needed. So take out the recycling, go talk to your wife, have the beer with a friend, and do your fucking job. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because yeah. you're needed. You're absolutely needed. That's the challenge. That was beautiful. Well, thanks for having me on, Noah. All right, man. Take care. 
Well, that's a wrap. I hoped you loved the episode as much as I did. If you did, go check out Don's book. I suggest you start with A Million Miles in a Thousand Years. It's about how to live an interesting life. It's one of the books I've gifted the most. And don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you want more juicy, juicy business content just like this. That's youtube.com slash okdork. Next, text a friend you love them. Hey, amigo, let's go throw some Hail Marys. And before you go, tweet at me at Noah Kagan. Let me know what you thought of this episode. I love hearing your feedback. 